Yeah, I guess just about the work and just about what I make and what I do. Not all me, me, me. <laughs> but something along the lines of that, I guess. Yeah. So my name's Alex, Alex Warner, aka Cool Cat Warner, aka Primary Coloured Alex, aka Vitamin Boy, aka Sunshine Kid, aka they're just the Primary Colour Man. <laughs> that maybe me. <laughs> um, I guess I consider myself as just like a maker, really. Like I wouldn't, I wouldn't want to class myself in like the artist range at the moment. Yeah, definitely a maker. Like I like to, make, I like to take photos. I like to make clothes. I like to paint on clothes. I like to do drawings and comics and animations. Zine about salt because salt is an amazing thing, and I find it really mad how companies will go so far to even put their little logo on something that you'll literally just rip over, you'll literally hold, rip, and then put and throw in the way in the bin. Just and they're so stealable, so stealable. So for like, how what, long did that take you? Um, probably about a year, no, actually, no, less than that, yeah, about three months, three months. So this is this is one I made a while ago called Patterns of Peckham that are just like basically just like crayon drawings of parts of Peckham. They're just like really simple, just shitty little drawings like that. I'm quite a busy kind of guy. Like um, I'll always have my finger in several different pies and like different things going on. And so I get bored of mediums really, really quickly as well. So I'll jump from like one thing to another really, like really quick. One day it'll be me doing some spray painting and like trying out some ideas. The next day it'll be me, me, me doing photography and sitting down at my desk and actually like editing. Then the day after it'll be me doing like these big drawings and these crayon, like using different crayons and felt tips and stuff. And then the next day we'll then go back to like doing photography stuff again. Like it's just very chop and change. Like I'm, I'm not good at sitting still basically. <laughs> so these are all, yeah, these are all um, based off them um, like sticker books. And um, like the, uh, the like old 80s and 90s, like Merlin and Panini stickers that you get. Um, I found them all online. But yeah, it was kind of me just kind of reteaching myself how to draw again. I kind of messed them up like their ends wrong there. And each one, like each one does, doesn't look like him. Like they, they, neither of them look like each other as well. They all look really different. So it's quite funny. He's only got one arm. He's so hard that he bit his own arm off. <laughs> it won't take two on that. Take two again on that. I'll do it again. Actually, no, take two on that, sorry. Um, take two. I am from, I'm originally from southwest London. But I, I grew up in Rains Park, but never really felt like Rains Park was my home. More like just that southwest London was my home because I was always like hopping about from different friends' places to different different venues to different, like all these different things happening. Yeah, I think that coming, like growing up in London definitely shapes my work 100%. Like the whole, like my work is quite like, it's quite quickly made, quite um, simply and quickly made which kind of like bounce off the vibe of the city that you get where a city is very quick and things happen at a speed. These curtains are fucking awful. Kabloosh. <laughs> <laughs> so yeah, these ones, uh, these little ones here, these are from a series I did about an AFC Wimbledon game. Um, AFC Wimbledon versus Rochdale.
and it was because uh, AFC Wimbledon wear red, yellow. No, where AFC Wimbledon, sorry, wear yellow and blue, and Rochdale wear red. So it was me like going throughout like the beginning and the beginning and during the match of like trying to find red, yellow, and blue around the ground and stuff. So there's like eight little zines, and they're all just about the game. And so this is like the team coming out, and you got the keeper in yellow, Don's wearing blue, and then Rochdale wearing red. So this is, this is a guy called um, Terry, he sells all these badges. And there's like all kinds of different AFC badges, all kinds of like different club badges from all over the world. I can't even remember what the final score was this. I think it was, I think, I feel like we lost. We probably lost. Because we're shite. <laughs> it was from the show called Shit, Shite, Shit. Um, which like, I called it that because shite, I realized is like my favorite word. And it was for this work about like series, and so three words, that's kind of like a series. It was my first little like solo thing I ever did. I only did it in like this tiny, tiny room in the Richmond building. But, um, and I was like, if no one likes it, then the show's called Shit, 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 Shit anyway, so it's your fault if you don't like it. Like, told you what was here before. Um, but I was showing like lots of little zines and like these like photography thing I was doing with um, J Cloths. I was leaving all these different colored J cloths around my flat and just seeing like the different shapes they'd form like, overnight. Cause like, at the, and then at the end of every night, I'd like go around and take photos of them and see how people left them, like either scrunched up and see all like the different like new sculptural forms they'd do and they'd like turn into. Yeah, I wanted to move up here just because as much as I love London, I wanted to explore a new city and get a new feel for somewhere that wasn't somewhere that I was used to and somewhere that had a different culture or a different uh, like a different idea to what the British identity is and British consumerism is. But that's more or less why I wanted to come to Glasgow. And plus I was like, fuck it, like if, if, I want, if I'm gonna go uni or if I'm gonna go somewhere, I wanna try and get as far out as possible and see things that so many people I know haven't seen before. And yeah, Glasgow, like to me, Glasgow is just such a beautiful city and it has been so welcoming and has been so inspiring to me. Meeting amazing people throughout the city, all kinds of crazy cats. <laughs> Her name is Cassie. Yeah, she has the fastest bike in all of Scotland. But she's a bit poorly at the moment, she's got a bit of a punctured tyre. So we don't, we haven't been out for a while, have we, girl? I should wash my hands. So I, yeah, obviously moving to Glasgow, um, this is my first time I moved into a house, into a flat, and um, I'm quite like I'm quite house proud, and I like to have, I like to cook, I like to keep my space kind of like neat. I like to have all my influences all around the walls, more or less just for memories and stuff. Like I know people have photos of their friends up on walls, whereas I have photos of like fucking Poundland toys, just because it's things that give off memories and remind you of different times, you know. <laughs> I'm quite like I, li I like to have a space that I can call home and a space that I can call my own and come back to somewhere that like I can be inspired off and I can like having whatever I want on the walls like I don't like blank walls I like walls to be either caked and crap or just very small like aesthetically covered in crap <laughs> It's Thai green curry, but it shouldn't really be green. <laughs> yeah, it's just important how important red, yellow, blue is. You just see it around the city and it's left, right and centre, red, yellow, blue. There it is. So the use of primary colours in my work and the obsession of primary colours, I guess, from 
how I wear it every day to how I use it in my work. Just kind of stems off the kind of obsession and the way that when I go around cities or when I go around streets or wherever I am, um, I'll always try and keep my eyes open to see red, yellow and blue around. So if I see like a red car, a blue bin, then I'll look around and wait, I'll like map it in my head and I'll like look around trying to find the yellow sign and then I'll put them together and they'll all link up in my head kind of thing. The whole fascination of like primary colours is more or less like like red, yellow and blue can be like used for primary schools and for toys and for like learning books and for like children's cartoons. Yet those exact colours can also be used for bleach packaging and danger signs and warning like asbestos labels and stuff. And it's the exact same colours, both those like electric yellows like with the danger hazard sign. I just I just find that so fascinating in the way that how like the same colour can just be a completely different language in what context it is. A series I did about women's football and about the representation of women within a very overly toxic uh, space. So this is this is like a captain's armband. So I made these football kits as well and took all these photos and these red, yellow, blue pictures that go with the colours of the kits. But yeah, the whole kits all had different connotations. So like number one was meant to be goalkeeper, number nine striker, to ninety one was meant to be like the um, uh, substitute. And then when you, if you put all those numbers together, it makes nineteen twenty one, which was the year that women's football was banned by the FA, and then unbanned fifty years later in seventy one. And then um, instead of an umbro logo, it's an um no logo, because that's what a lot of women have been told throughout the years that why well, they can't play football. Like, um, no, I don't play. Yeah, whenever, whenever I'm taking photos out in the street, I usually will keep my eyes open to trying to find, trying to use photography, so using the square composition, whether a square or whether a rectangle, um, trying to get each of those colours in the space, in the composition, and so that not only I, the photographer and the maker, um, looks at the red, yellow and blues, it's also the audience that then picks up and looks at the red, yellow and blues as well. When it's in a whole series of all these different photos, that are very similar with the same colours and aesthetics, you then understand them and read them more as a series rather than just like single throwaway images. How many have I collected? Fuck me. Um, probably in the tens of thousands at least. <laughs> like my iPhone, my phone is so slow. My phone is so slow. <laughs> I'm very lucky to have a good set of friends around me. As crazy as each of them are, they're all beautiful in their own way, and I love them all to bits. I have a lot of friends who are into lots of different things, and I get very inspired off people that kind of buzz off their own record or off their own things that they're obsessed with, let alone me being obsessed with fucking stupid shit. <laughs> Even like friends that, I've got mates that don't make work the sim similar as me or don't look at the world the same way that I do, but because they were so inspired by what they make that drives them, that, dri that makes me so happy and that makes me more driven watching other people get be driven. If that makes sense? Yeah. <laughs> I'm not, I'm not really too sure where I see myself in the future or where I see my work going in the future. I quite like, I love the idea of like making a shit ton of work and then dying and then having all this big amount of work after it and everyone being like, what the fuck was this guy thinking? But no one asked them, no one asked them when they were alive, but when they're dead then they start asking questions. Yeah, I don't really know where I want my work to end up. 
whether in a gallery or in a bin, um, I'm happy as long as somebody looks at it before it goes. I just want to keep making it so that at least it ends, but then I don't want it to end. <laughs>